Okay, right here, balancing equations is the first thing I'm asking to do, asking everyone to do in the do now, and I think everybody's okay with that. Drawing a concept map is something that will be new to you, and I'm going to give you several examples of that today in the lesson, and then show the given, find, and finally solve the problem. And just so you have something to shoot for, here's the answer to that problem. If you want to write that in now, you could do that. I don't mind giving you the answer because uh, you'll never, if you don't know how to do the problem, that won't help you a bit. So th all this does is help you to make sure that you have it right. So those of you at home, you want to stop right now and, and write that down if you want. First of all, I want to show you a concept map that kind of relates back to what we were doing in the past. And let, let's focus on just the part that we used to do. Right here, we, we did grams to moles, and we used the chart, and the chart gave us our molar mass. Then we took moles into particles, and actually this guy went both ways, didn't it? Okay, sometimes we were asked to go one way, sometimes asked to go another. And when we got into particles, life was good and we were home free. Sometimes we got to stop at mole and that, was e that made an easy problem as well. What we add in stoichiometry is, first of all, and so this is what we had before. Now when we did stoichiometry before, we had to take a side trip. And by the way, none of your problems tonight are going to be using particles. So that's why I crossed that out, because I had a, uh, a few students actually were taking stuff into particles as I were, was looking at the papers. And uh, When we did stoichiometry, we used a balanced equation. And what did the balanced equation give us? Huh? Yeah, it gave us the mole ratio. Balanced equation, which gave us the mole ratio. And so with the mole ratio, we were able to change moles of, let's see, let's make this A. We'll call whatever this substance is A. So this was moles of A, and this was particles of A. Okay? Now down here, we have changed into B, which is a different substance. And that's what we needed the balanced equation for. So the thing that at, that's added now that you didn't have before, and I'm introducing all of this with a concept map so you can get used to a concept map, because I, I want to see concept maps for all of your problems today. And let's go ahead and move this over. This is the guy that we could use if we are at STP, if and only if. Okay, 22.4 liters equals one mole, is only available if we have the STP. And so with STP, so this little dude called STP gives us a wonderful opportunity to shortstop a lot of calculations that we would have to do more with uh, PVNRT. And instead of PVNRT, we can use this guy down here. Yeah? So that's that's what I was hoping to give you a big picture of, so to speak. And let's cover this stuff back up. And now let's go to an actual example. And I want you to be ready to summarize and or tell what you just learned in a different way in your own words. Okay, so we're going to go through this little guy. And let me get a little shade up so we can focus. And we start out with a balanced equation, always, right? Got to have a balanced equation. Gas stoichiometry, just like the other kind of stoichiometry, can't do it without a balanced equation. So we're going to use a relatively simple all gas type of an equation. So you, all of these guys are gases. You got gas here, gas here, gas here, and gas here. Has everybody had? To so I hope at home you're copying this down as I just asked the class to do. And let's see, they, in the problem that I got this from, they were asking for a volume ratio, uh, and I called it ratio. <laughs> anyway, ratio, uh, right here should be ratio. But this was asking us the ratio of carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide. 
and carbon monoxide, of course, is here, and carbon dioxide is here, and I called it 2 to 2. It could also be reduced to a 1 to 1 relation, right? Okay. So, now, in the given and find, you don't have the problem here, so I'm not going to worry about the problem itself, how it was worded, but I want you to know that we had a given of 42.7 grams of carbon monoxide. That's the stuff that's up here. And we know that it's at STP. And from this grams of carbon monoxide, we're supposed to get liters of nitrogen. Right away, immediately, you know that this balanced equation is essential because that's where we're going to get the ratio from of the carbon monoxide to the nitrogen. Okay, and th that's, what is that ratio? Come on, what's the ratio? Carbon monoxide to N2. Two to one, two to one. Okay, so that's a ratio that we're going to be using. So, first of all, what I want you to do is get the concept map idea. So, let's get that covered up and I'll reveal. Now, we're starting out, the given was grams of carbon monoxide, right? So your concept map always starts with the given. And all the concept map is, is to help you keep from getting lost in the words, or, or in the calculations, I'm sorry, calculations. Now, what is, we can't deal with grams when we're trying to compare carbon monoxide with nitrogen, so what do we have to do to the grams first? What are we gonna do? Convert it to moles, absolutely. So we're going to use the molar mass off the chart, and that will get us into moles of the stuff that we started with. See, we're still in carbon monoxide here. This is the big picture look that helps you make the calculations really pretty simple. Everybody got it? Here we go. Now, what are we going to do after we get carbon monoxide in moles, what can we do now? What will the balanced equation let us do, Edmund? 22.4 liters is equal to what? One mole. Okay, we're going to use that equality in our next change over here. So the balanced equation, oh, I'm sorry. No, that's the tempting thing to do. We've got, we've got to stay in moles because that's the way we're going to do our mole ratio comparison. Okay, we can't do that in grams. We'll do that as the next step, though. Okay, I, I fell into that trap myself. <laughs> and, and I got to the next step and I realized, oh, why did I do that? I didn't change that. I changed that thing into, gram, uh, into moles, and I really needed to, uh, into grams, I'm sorry. I changed into grams, and I really needed it in moles. So we got to stay with moles. So moles of CO into moles of what? What's the find? And two. Okay, so that's what we're going to get our moles of. And that's where we use our balanced equation. And again, what is the ratio of carbon monoxide to nitrogen? Two to one. Absolutely. Okay, so now that we've got moles of N2 and we know we're at STP, now what can we use? Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is where we use our STP and 22.4 liters. Okay, so what, now that we have that all set, are we done? What are we going to get when we use this? What are we going to get? We're changing moles into what? Liters. And is liters where we're trying to get? Yeah, and we're talking about N2 now, aren't we? Yeah. So we take this guy over, and we got liters of N2, and we're a done deal. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes feel that way when you finish a problem. <laughs> you think you understand it. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and do a copy-paste here. Paste. And we're going to use this guy down here. All right. Let's go down now and look at what the actual problem works out to be. And so you, you, you really need to copy this down so you, you got it for your records. 
Okay. So we put in our grams, which comes as the given. So the given is here, and you, you plug it in down here. Now, next thing we're going to do is what? what? What are we doing? See? See how the concept map ties into this now? Okay? Concept map tells us exactly what to do. We're going to use the molar mass. So we've got one carbon and one oxygen, and we're going to add those guys up. And I think I've got that down here. Yeah, there we go. So one carbon, one oxygen, and that adds up to 28, point, uh, 28 grams, and that's equal to one mole. And that's what we're going to use in our next calculation. Yeah. And because grams is up here, we had to have the grams part of this down here and we have the one mole up above. Notice that the, the 28 is next to the grams, which is why it winds up on the bottom. And that the one is next to the moles, and that winds up at the top. So the number on each side of the equality has to stay with the unit of measure that's on that side of the equality. So when we say grams down here, we got to look here, Here's my grams, what's the number to the left, and that's the number you pull into the bottom. And then the other guy, the other side, is what we pull into the top. Yeah? Now, what am I going to do next? Where am I right here on my concept map? Here, let's, let's just, hold on. Okay, where am I? Am I here or here? This is one, this is two. Where am I? One. You betcha. This is one. I'm right here. Now, what am I going to do to get to my next step, which is I'm, I'm trying to get to moles of N2? The mole ratio. And what is the ratio that we're going to use? It's a two to one, dude. Okay. And we get that right up here. Okay. In the balanced equation. Oh, I lost my arrow. There we go. Arrow, come up, please. Thank you. And so my arrow tells me that the N2 has a coefficient of 1 because it has no coefficient. And the CO has a coefficient of 2. Now again, the CO having the coefficient of 2 means that 2 moles of CO... Oh, let's stop this happening. Down you go. Oh, don't bother me anymore. There you go. Oops, here. That, that line that I just drew will keep that little thing with, that's happening with the arrow from happening anymore. So at any rate, we got the, the two from the CO2 on the bottom, and that's what we had up here. And we got the one from, in, oh, from nitrogen, and that guy is the coefficient with moles in the middle. Because now we're using the actual mole ratio. We're not using a volume ratio at this time, are we? In some gas problems, we use mole, uh, volume ratios. This time, we're not using volume ratios. It's very different. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do down here is, whoops. Next thing we're going to do, by the way, where are we now at this point? Where are we? Where is this? Is it one or two? One. Excellent. Okay. So here we are. We're going to take and put this guy in for our last part. And we have 22.4 liters is equal to one mole. And the one stays with the mole because that's where it was in the equality. And the 22.4 stays with the liters because that's the side that the liters were on. And whatever is next to liters has to come with it, that number. And so that's why this guy is 22.4 liters, and this guy is one mole. Okay, now comes the fun part. I want you to summarize for yourself <coughs> what you just learned. I want you to take a few minutes just like the people at home are going to do that are watching this video. And I want you to summarize what you just learned on paper in your journal section. 
So I'm giving you three minutes to stop your video and, and reframe what you just learned. Okay, so Austin, would you share with us what you think you just learned? And would you come up close so it can be recorded? <laughs> okay. Tell us what you think you just learned. Um, we learned that by using the concept map, it will help you organize the problem and help you answer it. It also helps you because it guides you to each and every step that you have to do. At the beginning of this concept map, you will have the fine. Oh, now, see, he's getting to the meat. This is marvelous. Everything that he set up to here is great for the journal, but if that was all he had, the journal would be a zero. But now he's putting the meat on it. Now he's got it. Now I'm, I'm getting the feel that we're going to hear a really good journal entry. Go for it. Keep on. At the beginning of the concept map, you'll have the finds, and at the end, you'll have the. I mean, uh, <laughs> at the beginning of the concept map, you'll have the given, and at the end, you'll have the finds. In between the given and find, you'll have the steps in order for you to get to the find. And that's Beautiful. The only thing that would make that better is to give it an example. And so why don't you just use this example as part of your 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 uh, journal? Okay? Give him a hand. That was, that was wonderful. Very, very nice. Let's let's hear if we got some other stuff that's good. Christian, how about it? What do you have? Um, now, if you come up here please so we can hear. Yeah. Um day I learned how to solve stoke. Stoichiometry. Stoichiometry, uh -huh. problems of volume and mass. In order to solve, we have to balance the chemical equations first, then write down the given and find. Now you see, he had something that Austin didn't have. Okay, the balancing of the chemical equation. Okay, and that's something you could add. Yeah, that's that's nice. That's Very it? good. Or, Keep okay. going. Okay. Um, first, we put... Well, I just like... No, I just read what you have. <laughs> First, we put the given over one, then multiply. Uh, the, give, the given over one, then multiply on the top and divide on the bottom for the molar mass. Okay. okay. And now, you you want to get in there? That we're talking about concept map now. You didn't get into numbers, so that was great. And you're you're giving a very good description. Okay. Carry on. Good job. Then multiply and divide the mole ratio. Mm -hmm. And we multiply and divide STP. Multiply and divide with the STP part. Very good. Okay. Very, very nice. And we end up in this particular problem that we were, were looking at today, we're ending up with leaders. So, two good journals. Hey, let's go for a third. Uh, Elsa? Okay, just come on up. Yeah. Today in class, we learned how to use contact maps help us with solving our equations. First, we put the given over 1. Next, to cancel the grams, we use the molar mass from the chart. In the third fraction, we put the moles from the balanced equation over the second substitute. Okay, you just got to start. So you, you have a little bit more to do, yeah. right? Okay, so we, we got uh, two and a half. <laughs> Not not bad. All of you are on the right con are on the right track, in my opinion. So I'm I'm very pleased with what I'm seeing. If you haven't got this down, or you want to hear again what either or, or any of the students just said, that'll be on the recording tonight. So let's go back and let's apply what we just learned to this do now problem. So you're going to balance the equation. You're going to draw a concept map. And then you're going to show, uh, draw a concept map to figure out how many liters of O2 can be created. So, our, what's our find here? Liters O2. And what's the given? 29 grams of potassium chlorate, this stuff. And what else do we have given? Okay, STP lets us do that final step, doesn't it? We can't do that final step without the STP. So everything is good. So we've got this dude. Now we're going to show the given and the find, and then we're going to solve the problem. Okay, so go for it. Let's see how you do. 
Okay, as I had my class do this, I found that several students were not doing a concept map first or the concept map wasn't complete. In either case, it gives you real fits because you can't get the right answer. And you can't get the right answer because you're using the wrong stuff. And so it's very, very important, for instance, that we know that the find is sitting right here. It's liters of O2. And we know that the given is the grams of KClO3. We've got to keep our heads on straight, and that's what the concept map is all about. And by the way, this is the answer that you ought to get when, you, when you're done, if you've done everything correctly. And so the neat thing for you as you're watching the video is that you're going to have this answer to shoot for, and you'll know if you haven't done it right. If you come up with the wrong answer, your concept map has probably got something wrong with it. And that's where you can fix things for yourself and come up with what you need to actually do the, the, uh, the thing correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll put in, um, uh, who would like to volunteer to bring up their paper? So as we look at a student paper, we actually see things done pretty doggone correctly. This is nice. It's, it's uh, refreshing to see this happen. And so our given and our find are first of all stated, and those are correct. And it's important to have that STP in there, okay? The STP is what lets you make that final step, isn't it? The 22.4 liters equals a mole will not equal a mole unless it is at STP. Okay, so here's our concept map. We've got the grams of KClO3 and she, she abbreviated molar mass as mm, and that's just fine, and that's what you're getting off the chart. And then we're going to go to moles of KClO3, so we can use the balanced equation to compare moles of KClO3 to moles of oxygen. And why is that? Because the moles of oxygen is what we're asked to find, and the moles of KClO3, we weren't given directly, but we calculated that in this first step. So here's where we're doing that comparison using the balanced equation, which, uh, did I not get that? I didn't get the balanced equation in here. Anyway, the balanced equation should not be too difficult for any of you to do. But here she's got the STP step last. STP bec allows us to use this 22 point for liters, and let's get that just a little bit neater. Uh, this is the 22.4 liters is, let's down. oh, let's just do it to the side, is equal to one mole. And that's the STP step. So, and that's what's going to give us the liters mm -hmm. of O2. And so as we actually look at the calculation, Okay, the, this group of students did it really nicely. They canceled their units of measure as they went. We had 29 grams to start. The molar mass was 122.1. Could have been rounded to 122, but th that's just fine. And we got one mole of KClO3. So these guys are the same stuff. Now here's where it changes to the different stuff, and that's what we were doing here with the balanced equation and the concept map. So we have to have the KClO3 on bottom because we got KClO3 on top here. We got moles of O2 that we've finally converted to, and now we just use the, the uh, STP step, which is using the 22.4 liters equals one mole, and that gives us the correct answer of 7.92 liters of oxygen. I hope you find this helpful.